Hey everyone, I'm John with 757 Woodworks and today I'm going to show you the perfect beginner project with your laser and light burn. I'll walk you through step by step in light burn how to create this wooden key tag which is perfect for yourself, friends or family, and even something you could sell to make some side cash. So let's jump in and get started. First thing we're going to do is open up light burn on my computer. Now, if you're not familiar with Lightburn, it is definitely considered the premier laser software in the maker community, and I definitely recommend checking it out. They even have a free trial. All right, now that Lightburn is open, we're going to use the rectangle tool to place a rectangle right on the screen. The size doesn't matter yet, as we're going to use a specific measurement on the toolbar to adjust it. My key tag is going to be two and a half inches wide and one inch tall. Obviously yours can vary for what you'd like. After we've adjusted the size, I'm going to go ahead and add circular corners to the key tag. We can start that by grabbing the circle tool and placing the circle right on the screen. I'm going to adjust the size to make it a half inch in diameter. You'll need four of these total if you want to make yours just like mine. Now, Lightburn has some pretty cool features to help you with alignment. If I grab the circle and move it onto the rectangle line, you'll see that your pointer graphic changes. Once I bring it to the intersection of the rectangle, it changes again. This new icon means the center of the circle is over the center of the rectangle's corner, which is exactly what we want. Now I'm going to go ahead and repeat this for the remaining three sides. So now I've got a pretty weird looking shape at the moment and this is definitely not going to burn like I want. To get the corner of the rectangle to match the inside circular shape we need to do a boolean subtract on the toolbar. Now to do this, you need to select the rectangle first and then the circle. And after you've done that, click on Boolean Subtract. You'll see that the circle disappears and leaves an interesting corner detail on our rectangle. Now, just like before, you'll need to repeat that for the remaining three sides. Okay, now we have all four sides complete and it is starting to look like a key tag. So now we need to add the hole for the key ring to go through. We will need to create another circle using the circle tool and this one I'm actually going to size to four millimeters. To do this, we will need to click the inches button just to the right of the measurements and you'll see it switch. Now, just like before, I'm going to drag this circle to the rectangle edge to find my center point. You'll see when I try to drag it outward, my Y position does slightly move. To counteract this, I'm going to change the X position manually to where I want it, leaving the Y position centered at 155.7. After getting the hole for the keyring where you want it, it is now time to add our image to the tag. I personally went with a home sweet home file I got off of Etsy, but you can do something as simple as putting some text on it to personalize your tag how you want. Here is an example picture of a spare set of my keys that I gave to my friend for emergencies that is quite a bit more simple. Now, once the image is somewhat centered in the key tag, I'm going to play with the sizing until I get something that I like. Don't worry about getting it perfectly centered right now, as Lightburn has tools that are going to help us with that. Like the Boolean tool we used to cut out our corners earlier, we're going to select our key tag shape first, and then select the graphic second. Once you've done that, go to your toolbar and find the alignment buttons. We're going to choose Align V-Center as well as Align H-Center. When we are done with both of those, we will have a perfectly centered image inside of our key tag. 
So far I've been working in just one layer, but the key tag is now finished and it isn't going to burn the way we want unless we separate the parts into their own layers. Now, as you can see, I did a total of three layers, one for the engraving, one for the keyhole, and one for the tag itself. Light burn will burn everything in order of the layers, so it's a good practice to work from the inside out just in case the wood moves once it's cut. Now, your particular cut settings will vary per your machine. I am using an Ortor Laser Master Pro that has a 5.5 watt output. If you've got a similar output, these settings may work well for you if your wood is close in thickness. I'm using a piece of pallet wood that I've planed down to 4 millimeters thick. For engraving a wood, I typically am around 80% power and 1600 millimeters per minute. For cutting through 3 to 4 millimeter wood, I use 90% power and 100 millimeters per minute with two passes. Just so you know, it is a good rule of thumb not to run your laser at 100% power as it will shorten its lifespan considerably. Now, one trick I didn't learn until using light burn for a while was how to adjust settings to speed up your burns. I make a habit on any engravings to click the flood fill, fill shapes individually, fill groups together, and fill shapes at once, and check the preview after each one to see which ones ends up being fastest. In this case, it ended up being fill shapes at once. Alright, now for the fun part. I put the wood onto the honeycomb grid and frame the burn to make sure I've got everything aligned properly. Just as a side note, if you do cut through wood on a regular basis, I cannot stress the importance of having a honeycomb grid and an air assist enough. The last thing to do before I start the burn is to install hold down pins to make sure nothing moves and frame it one more time. Once we know everything is good, start the burn. And the burn is about to finish. One tip when cutting through material is to look for the drop that you see right here so that you know it's cut all the way through. Well guys, that's it. I appreciate you watching, and if the video was helpful, please consider subscribing and liking the video. Thank you.